Good morning, eighth grade. Here we go, another beautiful week. NWEA this week. Make sure those laptops are charged. Let's get into this. This PowerPoint is on uh, the homepage for you guys. If you wanna revisit this slideshow later to relearn the notes, uh, obviously this video will be posted as well, so you can check it there. But I'm gonna go through this with you, and then your assignment is on Canvas today. Here we go, ratios and proportions. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities by division. In one rectangle, the ratio of the shaded squares to unshaded squares is 7 to 5. So again, 7 are shaded, 5 are not. So there are 7 shaded, 5 not. That is equivalent to the ratio of 28 to 20. Because again, you may say, well, there, that's 28 shaded. Agreed. But look at total mass of shaded versus total mass unshaded. These two ratios are the same, or what we call equivalent. Now, before we go to the next slide, what do you notice a little bit about these numbers? Seven to five and 28 to 20. Anything? Maybe, maybe if we looked at them this way. Oh, can you see the green? You know, and you know what? I've been told I'm writing too small. So, let me just see something real quick. If I had 28, yeah, get at me. 28 over 20, is that, do you notice anything similar to seven over five? Hopefully some of you are, you're gonna be able to use some fraction reducing or reduction today to tell if things are equivalent. So here's the three ways they can be written as ratios. Literally, it says seven to five, right? And this is actually read the exact same way. You see the little colon? You wouldn't say seven colon five. That's weird. Don't do that. This is seven to five also, okay? And seven over five, name the same ratio. Now, again, I want to make sure this looks like a fraction. You usually say seven over five. I said that intentionally to let you know, don't say it that way. Don't say it that way because seven over five is the fraction seven fifths. I know this sounds confusing. That's not what we have. This is still pronounced seven to five because we're talking about ratios. Whenever you're talking about ratios, you use the word two. That's not seven over five. That's seven to five because we're talking about ratios. I know that sounds weird, but I gotta make sure you understand the difference there, okay? So let's, let's revisit this again and talk about how we can know if things are equivalent. Now we already talked a little bit about it where, well, I noticed that those could probably, they could probably be the same because if I were to reduce both of these by four, we would get, seven over five. So when we reduce the ratio down to its greatest reduced form, that's when we can tell if things are equivalent. But like I said, they were the same thing. 28 to 20 is the same as seven to five. So now they're asking us to take a little, uh, little fun here. Find two ratios that are equivalent to each of the given ratio. So let's find two that are the same as nine to 27. Might be confusing. Let me, let's do the easy one, okay? What other ratio would be equivalent to nine over 27? Well, do you notice anything when you have nine to 27 here? Something they maybe share? All right, hopefully someone said three. Let's just try that, three. If you said nine, you're not wrong either. But let's do this. If I were to take nine to 27, and divide each of them by three, what will I get? Nine divided by three is three. 27 divided by three is nine. This is an equivalent ratio to nine to 27, okay? This is one answer. These are equivalent ratios. Now, I do wanna show one other method though. So we've been shrinking them to get them to be equivalent, right? I shrunk down 28 over 20, and I was able to tell if they were equivalent. We shrunk this down to get them to be equivalent. There's another way to get equivalent ratios. 
multiply, make them bigger. So what if I take 9 over 27 and multiply top and bottom by 2? Well, I'll get 18 over 54. That's still an equivalent ratio to 9 over 27. So it's very, a lot of fraction rules apply here, okay? If you want to find an equivalent fraction, I'm sorry, not a fraction, an equivalent ratio, you either have to grow top and bottom by the same number by multiplying, or you have to be able to divide top and bottom by the same number, okay? But you want to make sure that you're treating them both the same to get an equivalent ratio, all right? You go now. 64 to 24. 64 to 24. However you want to do it, create two equivalent ratios. Feel free to pause me. Go. They're kind of saying what we're saying. Multiplier divide the numerator and denominator by the same non-zero number. Hey, we did that. <laughs> Okay, notice that they divided by nine. So I'm just showing you there's lots of ways to do this. So if you're still working on that second one, there's very little chance that you'll all have the same answers. There are infinite numbers of equivalent ratios. All right, we're gonna look at what they do. But keep in mind, I want you to check your work. As long as you grew or multiplied top bottom by the same number or divided top bottom by the same number, you have an equivalent ratio. Here we go, oh, they multiplied by two. How many of you multiplied by two? I can't see you, but thank you for raising your hand. 128 over 48. That is one equivalent ratio. And there's lots to divide by. They divided by eight. Anybody else divide by eight? I see you. Hey, you, good job. Uh, what do we get? Eight over three, okay? So that's how we find equivalent ratios. Proportions. All right, here we go. Proportions. Proportion is an equation that states that two ratios are equivalent. Okay? It is something that's it's an equation that states two ratios are equivalent. Ratios that are equivalent are said to be proportional. Okay? They're indirect proportions. Equivalent ratios are identical when they are written in simplest form. So, simplest form. Think fractions. If it's all the way reduced, that's your simplest form. All the way reduced, that's your simplest form. So let's see. Are these two ratios equivalent, or do they form a proportion? So I'm just going to do this one quick because I think we can figure it out. I have to reduce 3 over 27 and 2 over 18. Okay? 3 over 27. What would we reduce those by? Hopefully you said 3. So... 3 over 27, we're going to divide top and bottom by 3. We're going to get 1 ninth. Okay, so far so good. Reduce the other one. 2 over 18. How can we reduce this? Well, hopefully you said 2. We're going to divide top and bottom by 2, giving us 1 Nine. Hey, what do you notice about our reduced ratios? They are equivalent, which means these two form a proportion. So we would say, yes, they form a proportion. Okay? Try B. Try B. Go. Reduce. See if they're equal. Don't worry, I'm just clicking because the notes tell us that we're right. Why would they ever doubt us? Pause if you need more time. Here we go. 12 over 15. Let me get out of the way. Did you divide them both by 3? I hope you did. Because you get 4 fifths. So 12 over 15 became 4 fifths. If I reduce 27 to 36, 
All right, they share a nine. We get three fourths. Are those equal? Hopefully you know that answer. The answer is no. So they would not be in proportion. All right, last problem, last problem. Here we go. At four degrees Celsius, four cubic feet of silver has the same mass as 42 cubic feet of water, okay? So four to 42. At four degrees Celsius, would 210 cubic feet of water have the same mass as 20 cubic feet of silver? Now keep in mind, they give us four cubic feet of silver to 42 cubic feet of water, okay? So it's, I'm just gonna write this down. They gave me four silver to 42 agua, water. They are asking, would 210 cubic feet of water have the same mass as 20 feet of silver? So they're asking, is this the same as, remember, don't put 210 up top, because that's water. 20 silver to 210 water. This is how I'm setting up the question. They want to know if these are going to be equal. They told us we got four cubic feet has the same mass as 42 cubic feet of water. Notice they didn't change the degrees, right? If you change the degree, you might actually, too many variables, okay? Everybody figure out are these the same? Are these the same, okay? You can pause me. Uh, that was just me. Reduce. Well, if I reduce those, I would have to reduce by, what, two? And we get two silver for what? 21 water. Okay, this one's a little bit easier. Clearly they both have that zero, what would they share? 10. We're gonna divide both by 10. Okay, mathematically, I get that I wrote this wrong. Don't you judge me, all right? Here we go. 20 divided by 10, you get two. Looking good. 210 divided by 10, you get 21. Oh, take a look. Are they equivalent? Yes. That is how I would have set up this problem to determine if my ratios are equal, which means they are in proportion to each other, okay? That's for the lesson today. Have a great day. Get on Canvas and do your assignment.